and, and, and show us this, uh, this impressive set of data. And then now let's move forward to the next uh, case study about Corona and telemedicine done by Uwe Hasper and Theresa Starrer here in Munich. Um, and um, so the stage is, is yours. Although we don't hear anything, so. So I think something is. So who is currently trying to present? Teresa or Uwe? I can see this. Can you hear me now? Ah, OK, now it's working. Yes, Perfect. Perfect. Okay. And can you see the, um, the presentation? Yes, perfect. Oh, perfect. OK, then I, OK, here I am. So hello, yes, uh, madam. I'm very pleased to be able to contribute to this um, innovative symposium. Thank you very much. My name is Teresa Stadach. I'm a senior physician in obstetrics in Klinikum Großadern here in Munich. And um, this lecture fits very well with, with Olaf's, I think. We are at the beginning of a project um, of the, on the topic of um, home monitoring in pregnant women. And our pilot project was uh, pregnant women with a placental cyst of unclear clinical relevance. We just published a case report, which I will um, present to you. And now we are working on the start of a study in which we will monitor pregnant women more intensively at um, home during or after a corona infection with um, remote CPG. Um, I begin with the case report. This was a 33-year-old woman in um, 32 weeks of pregnancy. And she was transferred to our unit for immediate delivery due to a major concern of her outpatient obstetrician regarding a rapidly developing cystic mass on the base of the placental umbilical cord with significant changes within the last 14 days. The pregnancy was um, unremarkable up to this point. And two weeks before, in the regular third um, scan, ultrasound scan, um, there was found a cyst on the placenta. It's, do you see my mouth? Yes. It's um, here, this little thing. And um, they checked it two weeks later, and then um, they saw the structure here inside and did not know what that is. The differ, um, differential diagnosis were, uh, were uh, um, thrombosed extra abdominal umbilical, umbilical vein varix or a placenta cyst or a umbilical cord cyst. And um, uh, umbilical, umbilical vein varix is a potential life-threatening ultrasound finding with a very high risk that the child will die intrauterine. But a placental cyst, on the other hand, is usually harmless. Due to the unclear morphology and the unclear clinical relevance, the possible risks and the complication of prolonging the pregnancy versus the risk of um, prematurity in case of delivery was discussed with the patient. And finally, a pros prospective approach with um, closed CTG and ultrasound monitoring was chosen. To avoid long inpatient stays and frequent clinic visits, especially during um, corona pandemic, the patient was equipped with a remote CTG monitoring system, and she was able to record a daily CTG from home, which were transmitted to our clinic and, ses and assessed there. Twice a week, um, she's, she was coming for an ultrasound checkup. The patient learned how to record the CTGs correctly with the help of a software, um, with the app, and with the support of a mid, uh, by a midwife. And after a learning curve of a few days, the CTG acquisition worked increasingly smoothly, and the time of recording 
until an interpretable CTG trace was transmitted, decreased. The patient learned that the baby um, is sleeping in the very early morning before breakfast, and it's easier to do the CTG there than when the baby is moving very much, for example. Um, 38 CTG records were transmitted from the patient to the clinic between these weeks. Um, the CTG record totaled um, 15 hours with a mean of 25 minutes, and we had 11 ultrasound scans. At 37 weeks of pregnancy, a timely developed girl was born after induction of labor with normal length and weight. The placenta itself was unremarkable and directly at the umbilical cord. Here um, was a cyst measuring um, four centimeters. The internal structure, this is this little thing, um, consisted of fibrin, so it was a true placental cyst. In the case presented, self-monitoring was a suitable method to closely monitor a pregnancy with a pathology of unclear relevance. No long inpatient stay um, were needed and um, premature delivery could be avoided. For this patient, it was the best way for prolongation of the pregnancy. And now we are planning the study, home monitoring of pregnant women during and after COVID disease, like um, Olaf demonstrated, um, corona infection in some cases results in increased thrombotic and microvascular changes in the placenta. This leads on the baby side to low birth weight, to prematurity, and sometimes um, even in, in intrauterine fetal death. And at the mother side, um, the pregnant women, the pregnant patient have more often gestational hypertension and preeclampsia. The objectives of the study are to closely monitor women during and after corona infection due to these risks. And at the same time, we want to reduce clinical visits of infection, infectious patients to protect other pregnant women and clinic staff. The inclusion criteria are acute or resolved um, corona infection during pregnancy and we um, and, and more than 24 weeks of pregnancy. And exclusion criteria are twin pregnancies, high grade obesity, and language barrier. The patient get a, receive a Triumph CTG mobile fleet. It's a network system with portable multicenter units for monitoring fetal and maternal vital parameters in the home environment. They so transmit CTG daily during and after corona infection, which is evaluated in the clinic. And they come directly in the clinic if the CTG is not in order or if there are difficulties with the recording. The normal prenatal care examinations take place as usually. Um, and the patient keeps a study diary about her well being, um, how well it works to derive the CTG, whether it makes her more reassured or more worried, and so on. Our questions are the pregnancy outcome after COVID disease. Um, are there corona-specific CTG patterns or early indicators to an increased perinatal risk? What is the learning curve of using, of using home CTG? How do pregnant women feel about home monitoring? How can we optimize pandemic management in the delivery room? And how do we provide safe care for high-risk pregnant women without increasing the number of clinic visits? And hopefully, we will have some answers of these questions by the next symposium. Thank you very much. So Teresa, thank thank you very much. Um, well, as I'm as I'm involved, I will not ask any questions. So 
I, I see Antonia clapping the hands. I don't know. Are you raising the hand or just, I mean, applauding? Uh, I was clapping. Uh, because, uh, <laughs> I can use the chance to comment that, uh, you know, these are the kind of studies. I mean, it's very... Yeah, 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 we, we, it's a bit hard to see you. Uh, yeah, sorry, my microphone was... Um, uh, I was uh, clapping, but I used the opportunity just to comment that uh, great work. I mean, it's very small steps, right? But we have to start so uh this is great I, I love this presentation and i'm looking forward to my results and maybe collaborating as well and uh, it's just the right thing to be done we have to keep going yep agree U Olaf, you, you you your hand is up yeah also from from here it's just, uh, thank you so much for a very nice presentation and a very good example of 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 the way we have to work forward be, be, because some colleagues would say where are the evidence? Where are the RCT studies about controlling this kind of patient in this way? We say, well, there aren't, but, but I mean, we, we have used CDT for monitoring all kinds of different high-risk pregnancy women. And basically we are doing the same just uh, in, in another setting. So, 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 I mean, really the for, here for, for having the courage for, for taking this up. And, and, and for implementing this way of, of uh, developing our speciality. Yes, I agree. Now, any, <clears throat> any other comments or questions? I mean, I, I, well, I, I was thanking Olaf for, for, for taking also, I think certainly personal risks to have done this, this study with these 400, uh, 400 um, pregnant women with high and highest risk pregnancy. And I'd also like to thank here Uwe because he has been the, the, the responsible physician who has taken actually the decision to take this, uh, this technology to, to, to use it for his, for, for his patient. You know? And with, with, without brave physicians taking risks and, 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 and helping the field forward, I mean, things would not work. You know? So for that point of view, thanks, thanks again for having made this possible. In, in, and we have to say, well, it's, it's a second wave. I mean, 15 years ago, even longer, we had a first wave in an attempt to establish uh, CDG home monitoring in Germany. And although we, we, we've been able to, to have the technology and, and have all the, the regulatory work done, but it was too early, it just did not really, it, it did not really uh, go through. Although this, this trial we've done with around 100 patients uh, already there showed, contrary to expectation at that time, women, the women loved it, they did not have a problem to, to use it and so on. And the problem was then the perceived problem or the actual problem was the, the anxiety of the physicians for, for, for legal implications if something happens and problems about reimbursement. And, and these topics are still around, but I think as, as a group, uh, we, we, we should be able to, to change the field here such that this is, this is, will be standard of care. And I think Denmark, to be honest, is, is here ahead of the field. Yeah. Okay, so then um, as, as, um, as we have, I, I mean, in my initial remarks, I said, well, same procedure as, as last year, a couple of things apart from the war have been changing. So the one, one thing we have changed is to, include student presentations in the, in, the, in, the, in the other presentations of the somehow more older physicians and researchers. And 